Today we are going to continue Unit 10 with your title to Space and Back. أهلا بكم في منصة البث المباشر محافظة اسكندرية. النهاردة هنكمل معنا Unit 10 Lesson 3, 4, 5 and 6. Okay. Our unit and title to Space and Back. Okay, look at this picture. What can you see? We can see is the universe, our planet Earth, uh, spacecraft, satellites, and so on, astronaut. So our unit talks about space. We all like space and dream of traveling there. I myself dream of traveling to space. Before we start, I want to ask you some questions. Have you ever thought of traveling through space? is an exciting experience for you? Have you ever imagined that? Have you ever considered the importance of having satellites? Satellites that we have in space, are they important for us? Okay. Then we are going to talk about another different point. Uh, I want to ask you, do you like reading poetry? What's your favorite poem? This is another point of our unit. We are going to talk about it later, but the focus now is talking about space. Before we have the main vocabulary, actually space exploration is the quest to understand the universe beyond the Earth. It has captivated humanity for centuries, from the first simple rocket to the advanced space craft today. So let's start our session with the main vocabulary related to space and space exploration. OK, let's start. Abbreviation means short form of a word, like television, TV. Allow means permit. Braces means support. We have it in our lesson, braces for our teeth to support our teeth. Headphones means earphones. Helmet means a head covering. What about moon or the moon? It's a natural satellite that orbits around the planet. Like we have in our planet Earth, we have a moon, one moon. Sensor means a device that detects physical property, like temperature, pressure, light, motion, and so on. What do you mean by signal? It's a gesture to convey information data from one point to another. It's normally not physical one. It's not physical. System, it's a set of principles or procedures. What about wireless? Wireless. Transmission of data without physical wire or cables. We are going to know, uh, uh, be familiar with some satellite devices like satellite phone, satellite receivers, satellite technology, satellite TV, weather reports, weather satellites, all of these are devices related to uh, space technology. Okay. Air, what do you mean by it? It's a mixture of gases, or it means sky or atmosphere. Continent, what do you mean by it? It's a land masses like Africa, Asia, Europe. Follow means a friend. Grain means the crops, like wheat, corn, and so on. In vain. In vain means useless or has no use. Task means a job or a duty. Tailor means worker, a hard worker, actually. What do we mean by verse? We mean poetry. We mean by verse, poetry. Okay? We are going to have some definition related to the same point. We have just said the braces, some things that people can wear to make their teeth straight or support their teeth. What about GPS? All of us heard about GPS. It's abbreviation for the word Global Positional System. It's a system for finding how to find something or get to a place using satellite. Who is it in our cars? for our mobiles. Helmet, a special hard hat used to protect the head. 
What about satellite receiver? It's a machine that can receive or read information that is sent by satellite. The information that we receive from satellite, this device receive it and transform it to us on Earth. Sensor, it's something which you can measure a small amount of light or heat. We have just said that. Signal information or instruction that is sent by sound or light. Oh, it's mostly not physical one. Wireless, able to use an internet without wires. What do you mean by tailor? Someone who is working hard. Fellow, another word for man or friend. Continent, we have just said, it's a large area of land in so on, like Africa, Asia, and so on. In vain, we have just said, um, useless. If you do something in vain, you do it unsuccessfully. And the last one, grain, we mean seeds or from plant that you can eat. Okay, let's move to another point. Some synonym and antonym. What do you mean by allow? Allow means permit, and the antonym is prevent. Clear means obvious, and the antonym is unclear. Comfortable means relaxed, and the antonym is uncomfortable. Invent means create or design, and the antonym is destroy. Possible means probable, and the antonym impossible. Follow, companion, and the antonym is enemy. In vain, useless, the antonym, of course, is useful. What about amazing? Amazing means awesome. Something awesome, something is very good, and the antonym is ordinary or normal. Bright means it's shiny, and the antonym is dark. Nearly means almost, and the antonym is exactly. General public and the antonym of course is private. Okay, we're going to have some suffix and the prefix. The ending suffix I O N A B L E A L it changes the meaning or the part of speech of the word. Abbreviate as a verb by adding I O N becomes a noun abbreviation. Comfort becomes with A B L E comfortable adjective. Globe with A L becomes global. Receive with ER becomes a noun, receiver. Sense with OR becomes sensor. Tell with ER, teller. Train with ER, trainer. Write with ER, writer. Okay, use. Use as a verb, useful, useful. Wire with less, wireless. Introduce with TION, introduction. Tile with ER becomes Tyler. Word career. Okay. Exhibit. The thing is inside the exhibition. With adding ION, transform it in exhibition. So exhibit is a verb or a noun. By adding ION becomes another word. It's a place exhibition. Sale with OR becomes sailor. Achieve with ME and T becomes achievement. Communicate. With ION becomes communication. Direct with ION becomes direction. Inform with ATIVE, informative. Informative. One with ER becomes winner. And the prefix three, that means again, here we've added to the word port, it becomes to a different word, report. Okay. Let's move to some language notes. Here we have the word sense. It has different meaning. Sama didn't go to school since she was ill. So sense here means because she was ill. So sense means because. Okay, what about this sentence? They have lived in Luxor since they were married. Since when? Oh, so since he refers to the starting point of time, since they married. Okay, so we have two different meaning for sense. What about weather and the climate? Both of them, we use both of them to talk about the state of the atmosphere, to talk about the temperature, wind, rain, and so on. But weather means um, the condition of the atmosphere in short time, like day or a week. Like this example, what is the weather like today? It's hot and dry. Climate, it's a long period of time, for months or a year. 
Egypt has a good climate all, all over the year or all the years. What's the difference between sign and signal? Sign is a physical object that can be seen. We can see it in different places. They, can, they are used to convey information or direction. For example, there is a no sign, a no smoking sign everywhere in the hospital. We can see it. It's a physical item. Scientists are looking for signs of life on the moon. They are searching for signs of life, some physical item to to uh, to demonstrate that there is life on uh, on it, on the moon. So we mean by sign physical item. We can see it. We can touch it. Okay. What about signal? It's a broader meaning than sign. أشمل منها. It indicates various forms of communication that may not have a physical presence. It doesn't have a physical presence, like signal of sounds, light, electronic transmission. It may be also referred to a gesture. We can say a signal with gesture with your hand or your face. In general, it's a way of communicating without using words. It's a way of communicating without using any words. So, look at this example. The officer gave a signal to the policeman to start attacking the gang by waving, by saying anything, not by saying anything, just a gesture. The TV signal, of course, was weak during the storm. We can't touch it. When the fire alarm sounded, it was clear, a clear signal for everyone to evacuate the building. When the alarm sounded, when it make a sound, it was a, a clear signal. Ishara Watha for everyone to evacuate the building. Okay. Look at this picture. What can you see? Wow. I can see um, satellite, radio signals, and a car what is moving on the on the road using GPS. The car is using GPS. So what does GPS refer to? What does it mean? Okay, we are going to answer this question after reading the passage. Okay. Read the article quickly. Which of the things that the article describe do you use? Okay, we couldn't live without satellite technology. Sure. Since the late 20th century, we have used the satellite technology for many of the things we do every day. Our life would be very difficult, different without it. Here are some of the things that we use satellite for. Number one, GPS. Before satellites were invented, people had always used maps to find their way. Now most people use GPS, which uses a system of satellites that work together. These send the signals to receivers on Earth, which work out where you are. We have GPS in cars, on phones, and even in some modern motorbikes or motorbike helmets. Another. Another thing, weather reports. We use satellite technology in weather reports. Satellites allow us to study the weather all around the world. They send photos of the Earth from space. When these are put together, they show how clouds and the storms are moving. What about TV and the Internet? Lots of people have satellite TV so that they can watch their favorite shows and sports matches. The signal goes to a receiver on the house. In some areas, satellites send signals to the internet too. What about mobile phones? Have you ever had problems using your phone because the signal is bad? Of course, all of us. Satellite phones can work anywhere in the world. They are all very useful in places far from cities, such as on mountains or in deserts. Okay, after reading, let's check this question together. 
why is satellite technology useful for wizard rewards? Can you give me two examples of the places where satellite phone are used are useful? OK, take a second to think of the answer. Then we are going to check. OK. Which of the things that the article described do we use? Of course, GPS uh, with reports, TV and Internet and mobile phones. OK. Why is satellite technology useful for weather reports? Of course, they are useful. Satellites allow us to study the weather all around the world. They send photos of the Earth from space. When these are put together, they show how clouds and storms are moving. Number two, give two examples of places where satellite phones are useful. Of course, they are useful in places uh, far outside the cities, such as mountains or in deserts. Let's move to another point. Now we are going to listen to a podcast about modern invention. We're using uh, technology in a lot of things nowadays. Let's listen. Students book, unit 10, lesson three, exercise eight. Listen again. Are Sorry. These sentences true or false? Correct the false sentences. Satellites have changed the way that we do a lot of things on Earth. But did you know space technology is also used to make many of the objects we use every day? In fact, around 50 new products are invented every year using space technology. Here are some of the ones you might use. In the 1970s, space scientists invented a new type of helmet. The material inside the helmet contained small bags of air, which made the helmet more comfortable and protected the astronaut better. A few years later, one of these scientists had the idea of using the same type of airbags in trainers. Many modern trainers now use this design. In 1990, space scientists invented a new sensor that allowed scientists to take photos in space without using much energy. This technology is now used in the cameras in our mobile phones. Students book. Okay, let's continue. Students book, unit 10, lesson three, exercise eight. Listen okay. again. Are these sentences true or false? It's important for astronauts to be able to communicate with their team on Earth. Before the 1960s, headphones were big and uncomfortable. So space scientists designed light wireless headphones that astronauts could speak into without using their hands. Neil Armstrong spoke through wireless headphones when he first stepped onto the moon. In 1980, scientists were working on a way to protect astronauts' eyes in space. They read that the eyes of some birds have special oil that protects them from light and help them to see more clearly. The scientists designed a lens that could do the same thing. Today, this type of lens is used in sunglasses. People have wanted perfect teeth since ancient times. Did you know that the ancient Egyptians had used the insides of sheep to make braces for teeth? In more modern times, braces were made from metal, and then, in 1986, the first clear braces were created. They used a special kind of plastic that is strong even when it's very thin. It was created 
to protect equipment on trips into space. Okay, after listening. Now we have we know the benefit of using this modern technology. Okay, try to put a suitable title for the passage for the listening passage. Where did the scientist get the idea of the big wear in modern trainers? What idea did scientists use to protect astronaut eyes? Then, how did the ancient Egyptians make braces? Let's check the answer. Students book. Okay. Of course, the title is satellite technology. Where did scientists get the idea of bags of air in modern trainers? Space scientists invented a new type of helmet. The material inside the helmet contained the small bags of air, which made the helmet more comfortable and protected the astronaut better. So, a few years later, one of the, these scientists had the idea of using the same type of airbags in trainers. Number three. What idea did the scientists use to protect astronaut eyes? Scientists read that the eyes of some birds have a special oil that protects them from lights and helps them to see more clearly. The scientists designed a lens that could do the same thing. How did the ancient Egyptian make presents? The ancient Egyptian had used the insides of a she of sheep to make presents for this. Okay. Look at this picture. Who is he? Can you recognize this man? He is very famous all over the world. Yes, he is Dr. Farouk al -Baz. What do you know about him? Do you have any information about Farouk al -Baz? Okay, if not, let's read. Farouk al -Baz. Okay, scientists had done a lot of research before the first person walked on the moon in 1969. And one of the most important scientists was Farouk al -Baz. He helped to plan where Apollo the second should land on the moon. Farouk also taught astronauts which rocks to take from the moon on later visits. After studying the moon, Farouk started studying desert on the years. He used satellites to find rivers that were under the sand, and this work has helped Egypt and other countries to find new water. This is so important and a great man. He helped Egypt to find the underground water, of course. After reading, how did astronaut know which rocks to take from the moon? Number two, how did Farouk al -Baz find rivers under the desert sand? Try to think of the answer quickly. Okay, it's a check. Farouk al is a famous Egyptian scientist who works as NASA and his research has helped the whole world. How did the astronaut know which rocks to take from the moon? Of course, Farouk al taught astronauts which rock to take from the moon on later visits. How did Farouk al find rivers under the desert sand? Of course, he used satellites to find rivers that were under the ground. So satellites are very important in our life. They can help us to find rivers under, under Earth or underground water, which is a problem for us nowadays. Okay, now we are going to have another piece of listening between Lena and Angie. They are at a photo exhibition. They are having a talk with a guide. Okay, let's listen. Students book, unit 10, lesson five, exercise two. Listen to Lena and Angie talking to a guide and check your ideas to exercise one. This is a very interesting photo. Do you know what it is? It's the moon. That's right. This is a photo of the moon, but it's an unusual photo. This isn't what we see when we look into the sky at night. This is the far side of the moon. So is that the side of the moon we can't see from Earth? That's right. 
no one had seen this side of the moon before 1959. That's when the Russian spacecraft Luna 3 took the first photos of it. As soon as the photos were taken, they appeared in newspapers around the world. The photos weren't very clear, but everyone was very excited to see them. Then, in 1965, Russia sent Zond 3, another spacecraft, to orbit the moon. It took 25 photos, and they were much clearer. Has anyone made a map of the moon? Good question! From 1966 to 1967, the USA sent spacecrafts to orbit the moon and take photos. They used these to create maps of the moon. At the same time, Russia created maps using the photos from Zond 3. Were all of the photos of the far side of the moon taken by spacecraft? No. Soon after the maps were created, astronauts from the Apollo 8 spacecraft became the first people to see the far side of the moon. They took photos of the moon as they orbited it. Have any spacecraft landed on the far side of the moon? Yes, NASA sent a spacecraft to the far side of the moon in 1962, but it broke when it landed. A long time after this, in 2019, a Chinese spacecraft successfully landed on the far side of the moon. Okay. Students book. What do you think they are talking about? Of course, they are talking about the far side of the moon. How could Russia create maps of the moon? After listening, can we put these events in the correct order? Russia and the USA made maps of space. Zone 3 took some clearer photos of the far side of the moon. The USA sent the spacecrafts to orbit the moon and take photos. Luna 3 orbited the moon and took first photos of the far side. Chinese craft, spacecraft successfully landed on the far side of the moon. The first photographers, photographs of the far side of the moon appeared in newspaper. Okay. Can we put them in the correct order? Try to think quickly. Okay. Next exercise, we are going to choose between the two words in red. Nobody or no one had seen a photo of the far side of the moon before or when 15, no, sorry, 1959. A long time after or as soon as, as Luna third or three had taken photos of the far side of the moon. They appeared in the newspaper. The USA began making maps of the moon before or at the same time as Russia did. The astronaut took photos of the far side as or soon after they orbited the moon. A Chinese spacecraft successfully landed on the moon a long time after or as the NASA spacecraft broke as it landed. Try to think quickly. Unfortunately, we don't have much time today. So let's check the answer. What do you think they are talking about? Of course, they are talking about the far side of the moon which we can see from Earth. How could Russia create maps of the moon? In 1965, Russia sent Zone 3 to the moon. It took 25 photos and they were much clearer. Russia created maps using the photos from Zone 3. After listening, what was the first idea? Of course, with number D, Luna 3 orbited the moon and took the first photos of the far side. Number two with F, the first photos of the far side of the moon appeared in newspaper. Number three with P, Zond 3 took some clearer photos of the far side of the moon. Number four with C, the USA sent spacecraft to orbit, it, to orbit the moon and take photos. Number five with A, Russia and the USA made maps of space. Number six, with E, Chinese spacecraft successfully landed on the far side of the moon. 
OK, what about the choices? No one had seen a photo of the far side of the moon before 1959. A long time, as soon as Luna third or three had taken photos of the far side of the moon, they appeared in newspaper. The USA began making maps of the moon before or at the same time, of course, at the same time as Russia did. The astronaut took photos of the far side soon after they orbited the moon. The last one, Chinese spacecraft successfully landed on the moon a long time after the NASA spacecraft broke as it landed. Okay, let's move to another text, reading text. We have many reading texts in this unit. Have you ever used a map? To go to a place. Have you ever used the map to be a clue for you? Okay, we are going to know about the history of maps. Read about the history of maps, then when did people first use satellites for maps? Okay, we are going to answer this question later on. Let's know or let's check the history of maps. 100 Ptolemy draws one of the first maps. It shows the area around the Mediterranean. 1100 El Idrisi from North Africa, he's a scientist as well, draws maps in a book called Tabula Rogerina. It shows the world as a circle. Fifteenth hundreds, the Spanish sailor Cosa draws the first map to show America. Gorgeous Mercator finds a way to draw the round world on flat paper. 1800 roads and railways make travel easier. Maps become smaller and better. 1950s, the first satellite photos are taken of the Earth and the maps give much more information. 2005, people started to use maps on their phones and computers. They use satellites to get directions. So all of these scientists used maps from a long, long time ago. OK. When are the first satellite photos taken of the Earth? Let's check the answer. When did people first use satellite for maps? Of course, they used them in the uh, 1950s. When are the first satellite photos taken of the Earth? I have just said 1950s, the first satellite photos are taken of the Earth and the maps give much more information. This is a short idea about the history of maps. OK, another reading text. We are going to have some information about the International Space Station. Have you ever heard about it? It's a space station. Over there in space. Who can stay on the International Space Station? OK, let's read to get the information. The International Space Station is a huge spacecraft, 70 kilometers above the Earth. It's a place where astronauts live and work when they go into space. Most astronauts stay on the space station for about six months. The space station orbits the Earth every day. It travels at 27,000 kilometers an hour. That means that it goes around the Earth every 19 minutes. It's one of the brightest objects in the sky, and you can see it without using a telescope. A lot of people saw it already. Lots of countries work together to make the space station and astronauts from all, over, from all around the world have stayed on it. The first piece of the space station went into space in 1998. Since the first astronaut arrived in 2000, more than 200 astronauts, sorry, 200 astronauts from 19 countries have stayed there. Life on the space station is different from life on Earth in many ways. What are they? Any space washing, sleeping, and eating can be very difficult, but communication isn't a problem there. Astronauts can send emails or make phone calls to their families. 
uh, back home. OK, this some information about the International Space Station. OK, when did the first piece of a space station go into space? After reading the text quickly again, quickly have a quick look. What do these numbers and dates refer to? 27,000 kilometer, 90 minutes, 100, sorry, 1900, 1998. Uh, it can be read even uh, 1,000, yeah, yeah. so two digit, two digit. Uh, 2,000 and more than 219. What these numbers refer to? What are these numbers refer to? They indicate what? It's a check. Question number one, who can stay on the International Space Station? Of course, astronaut from all over the world. Can you stay there? When did the first piece of a space station go into space? When? Of course, in 1998. What about these numbers? 27,000 kilometers an hour. This is show how fast the space station travels into space. 19 minutes. This is how long it takes for the space station to go around the Earth. 1998. This was the year when the first piece of a space station went into space. 2000, this was the year when the first astronaut stayed on the space station. More than 200, this is the number of astronauts that have stayed on the space station. So last one, 19, this is the number of countries that the astronaut have come from. So these are, this is some information about the International Space Station. I hope it's useful. Let's move to another point or another reading text. Look at this picture. What can you see? This is our airs. What is this? Wow, it's a piece, a large piece of rock. Yes, we call it asteroid. This picture refers to asteroid. It's a rock that is flying through space. It's very dangerous. Okay, let's read. In 2020, a spacecraft landed on Penyo. Penyo is an asteroid. Asteroid. This is asteroid, which is a large rock that is flying through space. The spacecraft called O. Cirrus. Osiris Rex. Osiris Rex took small rocks from Beno and will take them back to the Earth in 2023. Then in 2021, Osiris Rex left Beno for its journey home. This will be around 2.3 billion of kilometers because the spacecraft must orbit the sun twice. It must orbit it twice before it can land on the Earth. This was an amazing achievement. Beno is more than 300 million kilometers from the Earth, but it's very small. It's only 510 meters from one side of the other. Osiris Rex left the Earth in 2016 and had orbited Beno for nearly two years before it found a place to land safely. So why has Osiris Rex made them to understand how the years was made. It helped the scientists to understand. Sorry, here is this a difficult journey. Scientists think that the rocks from Beno could help them to understand how the years was made. So the trip to Beno helped the scientists to know, understand, and understand how the years was made. Of course, through rocks. Scientists also think that the that understanding Beno will help them know where the asteroid is going. It's possible that it will hit the Earth, maybe, although not for many years. This is some information about uh, asteroid, small asteroid. Okay, number one, what's Beno? Number two, why had it taken the spacecraft so long to land on Beno? Number three, why is the journey back to the Earth so long? Four, what will the spacecraft bring back to the Earth? 
the last one. What two things do the scientists hope to learn? Okay, let's check. Okay, what do you know about Beno? I think it's related to space. Number one, what is Beno? It's an asteroid. Why had it taken the spacecraft so long to land there, to land on Beno? Beno is very small, so it took two years to find a, a safe place to land. Why is the journey back to the Earth so long? The spacecraft must orbit the sun twice before landing on the Earth. What will the spacecraft bring back to the Earth? Of course, rocks from Beno. What do you think do scientists hope to learn? They hope to learn how the Earth was made and where the asteroid is going. OK, look at this and you see here. OK, we have this in Alexandria, in our beloved city Alexandria. Yes, it's a planetarium. Have you ever visited the planetarium in Alexandria Library? We are going to read Hassan's homework. Then complete the sentence with a bus symbol, bus perfect form of the verb. OK, my trip to the planetarium by Hassan is Said. He is telling us about his trip to the planetarium. Last year, I went to the planetarium in Alexandria with my cousin Magdi. I was really excited because I hadn't been to a planetarium before. Magdi lives in Alexandria, so he had visited the planetarium a few times with his family. We saw a really interesting film about ancient Egyptian. We learned about how the ancient Egyptians had studied the star to find out when the Nile flooded. They had even used the star to help them build the pyramids after the film. We went to an exhibition about Mars. Did local you did local you know a space rocket had explored Mars before the end of the 20th century? It landed on Mars in 1997. We had an amazing time. We were there all morning, but when we left, we hadn't seen everything. I'd like to be to back there again one day. OK, this is his journey to the planetarium. Of course, it's an amazing journey. Complete the sentences with suitable verbs. Hassan was really excited because he, we saw a really interesting film about it. After the film, we went to two. Let's check the answer quickly. He was excited because he had, he was really excited because he hadn't been to the planetarium before. This was the first time for him. We saw a really interesting film about ancient Egyptian. Uh, after the film, he went to an exhibition about mouse. Now we are going to move to another piece of uh, text, literature, poetry. This is a different language, of course. It's a more beautiful one. We are going to have or to read about a poem entitled Day by Sir Cecil Spring Rice. He is a romantic poet. He talks about nature. Look at this picture. What can you see? I can see the sea, the sky, the wind. All of these are elements of nature, of course. So our poem talks about what? talks about element of nature. Every element of nature talking about his job, which is endless. Of course, it's endless. Let's read together. I am busy, said the sea. I'm busy, think of me. Making continent to be. I am busy, said the sea. This is the rule of the sea. He makes up the content. OK. I am busy, said the rain. When I fall, it's not in vain. When I fall, it's not useless. Wait and you will see the grain. I am busy with the rain. This is the rule of the rain. Helps the crops to grow. I'm busy with the air. Blowing here and blowing there, up and down and everywhere. I am busy with the air. So the air is blowing everywhere to make uh, the weather pleasant and to cool it down. I am busy with the sun. Wow, the sun. All my planets, everyone. No, my work is never done. I am busy with the sun. Yes, the role of the sun is endless. It is the, the, the main source of life on Earth, the sun. I am busy with the sun. The last stanza here, sea and rain and air and sun. Here is a fellow tailor one whose task will soon be done. In this last stanza, the poet here is talking to the element of nature. Sea, rain, air and sun. 
فتلزم he is a worker as well. He also works on earth. But his task, his job will end soon. Why? Because he will die. So the point here is making the comparison between man's work and the natural element's work. Natural element's work cannot be stopped. It's endless. Because of the stopped, life will stop in earth. But man work, man's work can end one day because man will die. Okay. Which words in the poem rhyme? What do we mean by rhyming? The ending of the lines have the same sound. Not letter, but we mean sound. Like here, C, me, B, long E. Rain, vein, grain, na, sound. Air, there, where, air, ra, sound. Sun, one, done, sun, na, sound. And here, na, one, and done, na, sound. Okay, after reading the poem, what helps the grain to grow? Why is the sea busy? What other words rhyme with rain? Let's check the answer quickly. Of course, the rhyming words here, vein, rain, grain, air, there, where, see, me, be, the same sound, all of these. One, done, sun. What helps the grain to grow? Of course, rain. Why is the sea busy? Because it's making continents. What other words rhyme with rain? Of course, rain and green. Okay, we are going to have exercise about vocabulary. Wireless technology provides the ability to between two organization or more without the use of wires. It allows the user to and send information while moving. Many applications of wireless technology continue. Dots, wireless keyboards and mice for computers, wireless speakers and are uh, now available on the market. This word should be mouses, not mice. OK, this is a mistake here. OK, let's check the answer. Wireless technology provides the ability to communicate between two organizations or more without the use of wires. It allows the user to receive and send information while moving. Many applications of wireless technology continue to appear Wireless keyboard and mouses, of course, this is wrong. For computers, wireless speakers and headphones are now available on the market. Let's move to the last exercise. Choose the correct answer. A is a special hard hat used to protect the head. Number two, the verb abbreviate can be a noun by adding the suffix. Scientists have been trying to invent things to make our life more Comfortable, the synonym of invent is. Is information or instructions that is sent by sound or light. My father put a wireless mouse to his computer that works wires. Is a person who works hard. His parents won't allow him to stay out late. The synonym of allow is. The antonym of fellow is. The opposite of comfortable is. And the last one, which is which of the following is not a prefix. OK, let's check the answer quickly because we are going out of time. They are trying to finish the task before June. To turn the verb train into a noun by adding ER, trainer. A satellite receiver is the machine which can receive or read information that is sent by a satellite. We change the verb sleep into an adjective by adding the prefix a, asleep. Is a continent, of course, is one of the largest of areas of land in the world, like Asia, Africa, Europe. The word run with the word fun. They are rhyming, of course. There is rhyme here. Nahana. You get the noun for the person from the verb toil by adding the suffix, of course, you are toiler, worker. You are not allowed to talk during the exam. They prevent you from talking. You can add the suffix to the noun comfort to get the adjective apple, apple, if a comfortable. The last one, many people use social media to communicate. They could to each other. They could talk to each other. أتمنى تكونوا استفدتوا معنا من حصة النهاردة كانت طويلة شوية. We have large quantities of uh, passages here. In unit 10. Thank you for listening. 
كان معاكم اليوم سهر عراقي سي يو نيكست تايم